I, I know this is not the actual building court, but this is the map though. What's it like being back in this building, having you guys all together? Go with the old head first. Yeah. Go with the point guy. <laughs> um, I mean, whenever you step foot on this campus, man, is um, you know, you, you always overcome with certain uh, memories that you have. You know, not just on the basketball court, but walking the hallways and, you know, guys joning on each other and doing tricks on each other and everything. Um, certain interactions that you had with, you know, Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith used to throw people in trash cans. Oh, you know, just, just crazy stuff, man. And being at a boys' school, it allowed you to have fun with. And, um, you know, it's, you know, my son goes here. So, um, you know, he's a senior now. But, like, those, those emotions always hit me every time I step foot on campus. You're next in line. He goes. Yeah, so he's the oldest, so he goes last. He gets to hear the young guys go first. Um, no, I just I reiterate what Dwayne said. I mean, this, there's definitely a vibe as soon as you walk in this building. There's a vibe as soon as you hit the corner to turn up off of Route 1 on this campus. Um, there's a brotherhood here. Uh, you know, we competed together. We won championships together. Uh, there's just a sense of... You know, you you feel like you're really home. You're feeling like you're in a place that's very comfortable to you. Um, and, and I don't think that feeling will ever go away. Uh, obviously, for me, you know, being the coach here for so long, it really, like, I mean, this is cool. Like, this is really, really cool. Um, my man right here, couldn't be more proud of him, you know, a week old or a, a few <laughs> days old as a head coach. And then both of us looked up to him so much as a yeah. player and then to see what he's done at Howard, man, is yeah. just, ah. Uh, Absolutely. Like, I, I could not be more proud of to, to say I know these guys and I was their teammate. It's awesome. You know, this is the House of Champions, and that's on the court and also off the court. Um, this high school prepared me in a way that allowed me a chance to go to Duke University, uh, have some success there as a student athlete, and to move forward in life. And uh, it all started right here. I know that this place is a special uh, for a lot of people, but being here with these guys today, man, this is, uh, this is a, something that I'll remember for the rest of my life. All right, real talk. When you guys were playing here at the Matha, did any of you guys think you'd actually be a college coach? At the time, not me. Not me. Not you? you oh, you, th you did? So at some point in time, I had to come to the realization that professional basketball, as hard as I wanted to work for that, and I did, and I always thought, you know, after I finished playing pro ball, I would. But I also, in the back of my mind, I knew that uh, being a coach is something I was going to want to do. I actually thought I'd come back here with Coach Wooten for a couple of years and then go mm -hmm. coach in college. So mm -hmm. I knew it was somewhere in my future. I just didn't and you know. You had when. it already mapped out. Man. <laughs> I had no, man, no clue. It wasn't, it wasn't on your <laughs> No, because, you know, it's funny. I tell people all the time, like, people like um, talk about coaches who – didn't play at a high level, whether it be, you know, D2, D3, or they were, they didn't play at all, they were managers. Like, I actually think they actually have a leg up because they know earlier on what they want to do, and they start to map out their trajectory accordingly, you know. But for a guy who's, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, man, I could be an NBA player. And you try to see that thing through for as long as you possibly can until that realization sets in. Well, for me, it was I go, you know, play overseas for three years, I stopped because my first daughter was, my first child was born. Then I have the itch to go back and I play another three or four years. And then I come back, well, I'm at the end of the, I'm starting from the, from the very beginning. Those guys that came out of college when I did, they became, you know, managers, video guys, operations guys, assistant coaches, and they're on a faster track to being an eventual, you know, eventually being a head coach and stuff. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I don't regret those things that I did, but like, um, you know, that's the reason why I feel like my son, he doesn't want, he play football here. He's like that. I don't want to play football in college because I know what I want to do. And I was like, absolutely. So, you know, that's my, my testimony. Okay. I had no, no idea. No idea. Uh, I remember meeting with Mike Brand, Tommy Amaker after Man, I, I graduated. I thought he was going to be a pimp. That's what I thought. <laughs> <laughs> Still am. <laughs> <laughs> is, it, is, it, is this some of the, Fun jokes you guys used to have when you guys were playing oh, together. Man. Uh, no doubt. Oh man. Uh, no hey, before doubt. he finishes, like he, <laughs> we would like when when we I was on varsity, my sophomore year was senior. Yes. I guess even as a freshman then. Yeah. So I would I lived in Fort Washington. So whenever we had a game, we get out of school, it was like guys would go to different places. Yeah. You know, yeah. some guys would go to uh, Coach Wooten's house with Morgan with, with Joe Wooten. 
I would go with him. He had a, what was, what was the red car you had, man? A Toyota Corolla. Man, but it was like a sports car. It was cool, <laughs> two-seater. And I would hop in the car with him and drive up Missouri Avenue. We'd go to his house and we'd eat, take a nap and everything, hang out. I had a crush on his sisters. I was like always waiting for her to come around, you know, so. Every, that was our dynamic. But go ahead. I think bad. he just made her day. <laughs> Cat, that was my girl, boy. I, I had no idea. I had no idea. I had a conversation with Coach Bray and, uh, and Tommy Amaker and saw that this could be a path and looked at the opportunities to kind of see financially how this path would look and couldn't believe it. Um, but it was just not in, in, my, uh, in my cards for that to happen the way it happened. So I interviewed at the University of Washington right out of school and not having experience. Uh, Bob Bender, who was the head coach at the time, didn't hire me. But right out in 1995, the job was paying $120,000. I was like, damn, this is a business I need to get in. <laughs> you know, because I come from a neighborhood where you know, we're just trying to blue collar and everybody's working and, you know, great families and things like that. So that was kind of, you know, for me, my path a little bit in trying to get into this business. Yeah, 120K. I was like, this is always bad. on the bread, bro. Always, 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 always on the bread. In, in 95. 95? What? That's a lot. At 23? I was like, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to learn how to coach. Yeah, really. How to coach? I'm do it. What he did at Howard this year was historical. Mm. Like, what was your reaction seeing what he was getting done there at HU? Pride, mm. pride. Um, just knowing him as a person, knowing, and no offense to Howard, but knowing what he walked into and mm -hmm. what he was gonna have to build uh, to see him do that and to do it quickly. I mean, since he's been there, Howard has been a name that's been buzzing. You know, you start with, you know, the recruits with Tom Maker and then the HBCU movement, like just, but he's been at the, the forefront of that. And, uh, you know, now you've got other HBCUs that are elevating themselves. Why? Mm -hmm. Because he started to do the same thing. Like he, he's a trailblazer. Um, and I'm just pr like, that, that is amazing. Again, I mean, I'll let you tell the story about the basketballs, but to see him build mm -hmm. that thing from the ground up is, is unbelievable. Yeah. Um, so our, our situation, is, you know, it was very connected because I went for the job as well. We both interviewed for the job and were finalists for it. Yeah. So I get, I got Did a. Did you guys know that at the time? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we know it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was no conversation. No. It was like you do your thing, we do mine, and we'll finish up at the end. We'll talk about it then. But to have it in, you know, I had a, you know, behind the scenes look at the things that were. Everybody sees the basketball stuff, but like with the administration and you know the all the all the things that make your job easier or harder and just and every job has their obstacles don't get me wrong but like to see the inner workings i'm like and i know what he's had to go through man like hell of a job like you you can't put it in the words for for you guys when you heard that he was going to be the head man at american what, what was the reaction because you guys know him better than probably most of the people around you very much deserved yeah. he's grinded he's he's helped other head coaches be successful He's poured into programs. He's done so much to contribute to the success of other people. It's about time he got his shot to do the same. And uh, again, you talk about being proud of somebody. Again, I've known Dwayne for a long time and I know how much he's grinded and I've known how much he's wanted his opportunity. So happy to see him get it. No, I've, oh, go ahead. No, I've known this dude when he was probably eight years old and I might've been 10 but we've known each other for a very long time and he's always been a basketball savant. You know, he was groomed to play this game and groomed to play the point guard position. The point guard position, his job on the court is to make sure that they're, you know, staying in tune with what the coach wants from the bench. Uh, so he's been coaching teams for a very long time. He's just been doing it in a different way. Um, he's like a little brother to me, man. And in some ways, he's been a, a big brother to me. And it's great to see him get this opportunity, especially in his home city, uh, that has, I know it means so much to him and I know it means so much to our city. Um, I'm just really proud of him. And, you know, it was like, I saw the caption on Twitter that we got our man. I was like, you goddamn right you got your man, <laughs> right? He's, he's gonna do an unbelievable job. You were talking, um, actually, 
we're gonna get to you in a second because you were talking about some put in the trash cans. It's, I guess fun stuff you guys did. Was fun. <laughs> like race, so, like uh -oh. race, <laughs> like what? Because he's the head coach now, and you guys are the older guys. Like this was the young one, the, yeah. the younger brother. Yeah. Like wh what was it like having this guy? The young one on the team. I was only one year behind Mike. Me yeah. and Mike played AAU basketball. Yeah, he might be older than me. No, <laughs> I, mean, I ain't reclassifying everything. I'm 48. I'll be 49 Sunday. All right, so you might be. Just so you 49. Little, yeah, just a little. Okay, bit, just a, little. a lot of guys weren't reclassifying then. <laughs> Wait, I get you're the, you're the young guy. Like, what's you two are like the older brothers? But he might have been younger, but he never behaved like he was younger. Yeah, yeah. He was a leader. He was a leader, and you know, my senior year, his junior year, we go 30 and 0. Like, Dwayne Simpkins led our team. He was the coach on the floor. He was the one that Coach Wooden looked to because he knew he could rely on him. So even though he might have been younger than us, and our senior class was pretty big, but he was the guy that led our team. Yeah. And so he, like when Coach Blakeney talks about the savant, like, yes, that's it's always been that way. Mm -hmm. He's been anointed to be what he is for a very, very, very long time. You guys obviously know what, what, what Mike did with the math of coaching here for the high school team, leaving for a couple seasons. What's your reaction, him coming back to the Maryland area? Well, I know when I got the job at Howard, I, I, maybe we were in this gym for a tournament or an event, and I was just like, Mike, what, what is it like to be a head coach? Mm -hmm. Because he had been a head coach for, here at the math of for a while. And uh, it's, a, it's a different when you move over from the assistant coaching seat to the head coaching seat. And, you know, I've always respected and valued who he is as a person. You know, his family, his dad has always been great to me. And dad sent me a message on, like, Facebook or yeah, something like too. that. Yeah, me too. Me too. I'm yeah. like, so, you know, he's continued to, uh, to be friends of, of us. And, and, but I, I, you know, to see him do an incredible job here, which was actually probably the hardest job to do is follow a legend and then be really, really su successful, produce a lot of guys that graduated from here, gone on to college and become pros and great husbands, great family men, great people in the community. Um, it's awesome, man, to see what he's done. And, you know, it's one year at Virginia Tech, but now I know what he's gonna do here at the University of Maryland. Um, it, it's gonna be special. The, I think what the energy that he's gonna bring uh, to the University of Maryland, especially being a DeMatha guy that hasn't had that <laughs> relationship with the University of Maryland, maybe since, you know, Dwayne and the young fellow that Travis. just transferred in from uh, Jameer Young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jameer Young. But before so, that, it was Travis Garrison, 20 years, right? Yeah. 20 years. Yeah, 20 years. And that's a damn shame because we're right down the street. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Literally. We could do a whole other segment on that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, what, so, like, what was, what was your reaction when you heard that, that Mike Jones was, was – I mean, I, this area. I was like, eventually it had to happen, mm -hmm. right? Just from the standpoint of uh, it's a natural, through coach here for almost 20 years <laughs> as a head coach, like down the street from the University of Maryland. Like if there was an opening to be had, if it, if it happened, and like with Tony, when the thing with Tony Skin did happen, like in my mind, obviously I'm like, man, I could try to get back home, but like I want to be a head coach. And the American University thing, it worked out perfect. And I'm like, there's, there was no question in my mind. I, I didn't even talk to him. I had, no, I had no idea, but I knew Kevin Willis is a pretty smart guy. I'm like, of course he's got to call Mike. Yeah. I knew that it, it had to happen, but I thought this was going to happen at some point in time, no matter whether Mike was at Virginia Tech or whatever. As long as he wasn't a head coach somewhere, like this was the natural progression. It just made, it just made sense. And this, in terms of what he did here at DeBatha, everybody sees like the championships that he won and what have you. I remember early on, you had your baby boys. You had Nigel Munson and, and, and those guys. Like, Mike, it was, it was tough getting started now. And, and a lot of people don't remember that. They yeah. see the championships and everything else. But I remember those times. And, and, like, that's why I appreciate what he's done that much more because it wasn't handed to him and everything. He had great talent. Like, he had young boys. He had to, like, grow and then get this thing moving in a direction in which it, it got to. Uh, let's have some fun real quick. Raise your hand if you're going to recruit the DMV hard. <laughs> What's going to, I know it's a dumb question, right? Yeah. What's it going to be like you guys showing up to a game, looking at maybe one player, and then you see your former teammate trying to recruit the same dude? 
I don't think it'd be a problem at all. Mm -hmm. um, for one, and it, we're all competitors. Yeah, yeah. So if we're going after the same player, I'm going to try to outwork both of these guys. Probably not going to happen in terms of outworking them, but I hope I win. All right, so let's be clear on that. But, <laughs> but you also have to realize that I think the reason why all three of us are basketball coaches is because of the impact we have on young people mm -hmm. and giving young people an opportunity to get a free college education, to get a world-class education at Howard University, to get a world-class education at American University, to get a world-class education at the University of Maryland. The fact that we're giving young men the opportunity to have any of those is what we're in this for um, because it's going to change their lives. Without it, who knows what happens? So we're giving them that opportunity. So, yes, we're all going to have the same player. I want Darren Haynes, you're going to come play for us. <laughs> all right, all right. What's up? But, but ultimately, we know what we're in this for. I'm going to take the point guard route, and I'm going to be like, hey, Mike, I know you guys are recruiting. How serious are you? <laughs> you ain't that serious? All right, look, I might have a chance. Or I may come to him and say, hey, look, do me a favor. If it doesn't work out, he's there for two years, and, like, doesn't work out, let him know. He's got a place here at American University. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? But you got to, you know, this, this, this is levels as this, right? I'm not going to beat the University of Maryland for a kid. If, he, if University of Maryland really wants him, I'm not going to waste my time. Yeah. But I do expect Mike to pick the phone up and let me know, like, hey, Man, we got a great kid. He's killed it in the classroom, man. Like Simp, he comes to Patriot League. Like he's all, he's a, he's he's all league. He's he's probably gonna transfer. Like that's why I'm gonna come in. I, I ain't gonna try to go head to head with the big boys like that. I'm not gonna do it. What about you, Coach? I'm gonna just look at the transfer portal. <laughs> <laughs> that's all. It makes it simple. Uh, yeah, it makes it simple, man. Yeah. I, you know, at some point in time, uh, you know, the way that it's set up for us today. Um, it's unfortunate that we have, you know, probably 1,100, 1,200 kids in the transfer portal right now. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it seems like a, a high percentage of every team is going to lose kids, um, right, wrong, or indifferent. So, I, I, you know, with recruiting, with recruiting a DMV, there's probably going to be 60 kids a year, 40 to 60 kids a year that may be a Division One kid from the Baltimore area out to Northern Virginia. Uh, headed towards like, you know, the Richmond area. We we kept a stat this year of every kid that is from the 757 Richmond on up to Baltimore, a little bit further up. There were 400 Division One players that were just from this area, mm -hmm. and we tracked them all year, had their stats updated, different things like that. And you know, so w when it comes to recruiting, there's going to be so many young men that are in this area that are terrific <laughs> basketball players. They've been developed the right way. We know that. They've been coached the right way. We know that. We know their DNA. We know their high school coaches. We know their AAU coaches. So we understand that these young men, especially right here in the DMV, um, come from a rich basketball background that if any of us get them, we feel like they're going to have a chance to be really successful. Because what, what's interesting is, is you guys were teammates, but now you guys are at three different schools but you guys are still sort of going to work together when it comes down to recruiting, transfer portal, stuff like that. So you guys are actually looking out for each other, even though you guys are the competition. Absolutely. Right. I mean, you know, his starting point guard played here for me at DeMatha. You know, Steve Settle, one of his wings, played here at DeMatha on, on, on one of my teams. Yeah. And, like, again, I'm rooting for Kenny to be great. Yeah. One of his assistant coaches was – a senior when I was a freshman here, Rob Belanis. But then you look at his roster and there's so many young men on that team that played here, but then there's others that I rooted for that I tried to recruit to come here that didn't, but I'm fans of. Uh, you know, again, I, I can't speak enough about what, what Kenny did and is going to continue to do. The, the program he's building is, is unbelievable. And there, there's so many kids, like if I'm out and about, there's a kid that may be, you know, yeah. above our level. I'll pick up the phone and say, Mike, maybe take a look at this kid. You know, I think you will like him or he may, you know, I may see him and he's, he asks, have you seen this kid? Mm -hmm. And I'd be like, yeah, wh what do you think about him? Well, he may not be good enough for you or he may be good enough for you. Like we, we will talk and we, we trust one another in terms of that basketball acumen that, you know, having these kind of discussions, it's very natural for us to have. What kind of impact did Morgan Wooten have on you guys? Hmm. Well, wow. I was, I, as you were saying, I was actually thinking, like the three of us are sitting here. Do you realize how many other DeMatha grads that play for Coach Wooten are coaching basketball right now? Um, it's so many of us. So yes, we're the three guys sitting in front of you today, but 
you know, there's Ronnie Everhart, there's Corey McCray, there's Mike Pegues. Like we're everywhere, mm -hmm. we're everywhere. And just what you just said, I can think back to all of the conversations I've had in the last two years because we're trying to help each other. My, one of my first events to go to recruiting as a coach at Virginia Tech, I bump into Ronnie Everhart. And he literally makes me sit next to him and then wants to make sure I'm good. Like, hey, are you looking at this kid? Are you looking at that kid? And not in a deceitful way trying to get information from him. He's trying to help me out to make sure I can do my job effectively. I mean, that is the brotherhood that we have here. Heath Schroyer, who graduated with Kenny, he's the AD at McNeese State. I mean, we're everywhere. We're everywhere, man. The <laughs> one common thread in all of that is Morgan Wooten. Yeah, we absolutely. all played for him, learned the game from him, yeah. and he inspired us to do what we're doing right now. Yeah, yeah. He was huge. I mean, Mike said it very well. But yeah, what, yeah, I just think so many people fail to realize what made him so special it wasn't like the X's and O's and everything. It was like just all the life lessons, man, that like I'm, I have I have more empathy for student athletes and what they're going through on the court, off the court and everything, because I've learned to look at them holistically. And that's what Coach Wooten was really good at. Like he was he was a teacher. He was a teacher first and foremost before he was a basketball coach, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. What do you think? Well, that's what we talk about. You know, we talk about when I do my presentations to student athletes and their families, we talk about, you know, my presentation basically comes from everything I learned from Coach Wooten, mm -hmm. being a teacher, about our family, you know, our priorities, like all of those different things that at, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17, you may think that, you know, are, are corny or, mm -hmm. you know, not mm -hmm. relevant. Uh, as you get a little bit more older and a little bit more mature, they're very relevant. And there's not a day that doesn't go by that, you know, Coach Wooten isn't with me in whatever I do. I, I, I start practice with fundamentals, mm -hmm. like things that we did here at DeMatha. Um, so that DNA that, you know, I was exposed to here with Coach Wooten is something that I take with me daily into my life and also with, my, with our program. If you replace me with... Coach Wooten, and he's sitting here right now looking at you guys as coaches, what would he say to you? Damn, that's a good question. I think he'd immediately tell us how proud he is of yeah. us. Um, you know, he used to always have this thing where don't judge me by my win or loss record, judge me 10 years from now when all of these young men that I'm coaching, what are they doing with their lives? Well, again, we're just three representatives of a whole lot of people, but I'd say he'd be pretty daggone proud of us. Yeah, only thing that stands out, he would, uh, the way he would say, buddy. <laughs> How are you, buddy? Like, it would make you feel like, like a, you know, a grandfather and like you just felt like loved and supported and everything. Like, I mean, that's for some reason that just jumped in my mind when you just yeah. drew that scenario up. You're trying to have an Oprah moment right now to make us cry. <laughs> like, that's where you're trying to go with this right now. I, mean, I, I realize the impact he's had on many individuals, oh, yeah. many young men. And obviously, he touched you guys. You guys are uh, just another branch from his tree. Yeah. And so, like, yeah, if, if he was here, Coach. Mm -hmm. No, I've, I've been staring at the, the Morgan and Kathy Wooten gymnasium sign right there. Just, mm -hmm. you know, when these guys have been talking, I've been taking just little glimpses around this, you know, beautiful gymnasium. Um, I, I know what the impact is that he had on me. You know, I grew up in the crack era um, and in a neighborhood where it was – very relevant. Um, so the love that he showed me when I was here, um, because I didn't come here to play basketball. I came here to play football. <laughs> so the love he showed me when I was here and uh, the life lessons like Dwayne and Mike talked about were, were special. There's nothing, like again, there's nothing that I don't do in my life where um, Coach Wooten's impact does not like come through in, in anything that I do in my life. So I'm, I'm forever grateful for, to him and his family. So my freshman year, he's a sophomore. <laughs> All right. uh -oh. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking, okay, I'm, I'm going to play basketball. And, you know, Dwayne's just in the eighth grade. And over in the old gym, there used to be a stage just off the court that were, it was used as two classrooms, but it was elevated. So if you look out the door, you're basically at rim level. And again, I'm thinking I'm going to be this great basketball player here, all right? He's a sophomore. He's 15, maybe 16 years old. And I'm looking out, and they throw a pass that's so bad, but he jumps up in the air, and I swear to you, 
I swear to you, his bicep is by the rim. And he's 15 <laughs> years old. And I'm just looking around, and then I turn back. We're in study hall with the freshman basketball team. We're supposed to be studying, but we're watching. And I turn around and I kind of look to see if anybody else saw what I saw. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm never going to play here. <laughs> like, I'm never going to be able to play here. He was so talented, but it was almost intimidating how good yeah. he was. Yeah. Uh -huh. And yeah. then he goes on to be a McDonald's All American and goes to Duke and wins the Natties there. And, you talk about you know, intimidation, though. I remember, I didn't, I didn't realize this until maybe a few years ago. I would pull up because I was, um, I, was in a, I had a carpool. So the guy up the street from my house come pick me up, come here. I swear to you not, as I'm coming down Route 1 and turning to the back lot, like, I would like, I would start sweating. And I realized it was like panic attacks. I, it was literally for like the first month, month and a half. Like, I was petrified, petrified to be like, people just assume like I came in like, I was, you know, varsity. I was the last cut. Mm -hmm. I was the last cut that year. Coach Wooten told me, he says, look, I'm not sending you to JV, I'm sending you to freshmen so you can play with your other freshman classmates. He said, but I'm gonna tell you, Keep yourself prepared because somebody could get hurt. Somebody could be on AP academic probation. And sure enough, like, I don't know, I played five games as a freshman and I got brought up, but I was petrified every single day. I stepped on campus for like the first month and a half. Is this because of the pressure of, because it's, it's just the so much talent here? It's the math. Oh yeah. Yeah. They were guys and, you know, don't let these two guys undersell. They were tremendous players. They like, just couldn't get as high as you. No, no, I, no, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no, 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 no. But there were, there were guys that left here that, you know, transferred before they graduated oh, to Matha that went on to, you know, other schools and then colleges that set records. Man. Like, you know, that haven't been touched maybe up until this year. Like uh, Keith Vini's record for three-pointers. Yeah, yeah. I think it just got broken the yeah, last year or yeah. two. We had guys leave here, man, go and go to wherever McNamara for him, Largo, and become second team All Met, first team All PG County. Like it's just not, <laughs> unfortunately, it's just not enough yeah, positions and spots. spots yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. But to piggyback on that, I think that's what makes us so special mm. because we didn't leave. Yeah. We didn't run. Mm -hmm. We stuck it out here and made it work for us, and we gained the value of what it is to be a DeMatha Catholic High School graduate. Mm -hmm. um, and no offense to the guys that made the best decision for themselves, but that's what binds us together because we did go through <laughs> everything you had to go through to make it through here, did and it. we did it. Mm -hmm. So oh. one quick story. Okay, I'm, down, I'm, I'm, down for I'm, I'm forever indebted to this dude. When I got the Howard job, it was the summer, and you know we were gonna start our summer workouts, and you know, I go into the equipment room. We don't have any balls. Like, we don't have basketballs. <laughs> like, well, we don't have balls. Like, how, how do we don't have basketballs. basketballs. Got a basketball team. We don't. Maybe the players took them when before they left for the summer, whatever it was. We don't have basketballs. Three years later, this is when they go to the NCAA <laughs> tournament. They didn't have balls. Talk about building. I had to come over here, and Mike gave me like twenty of his camp balls. For us to be able to be able to, like to practice, do two ball dribbling things, I, I might have had to come over and get more. But I, like we can't even begin if it wasn't for Mike and, and the generosity of him in the program. That's a great because we didn't have balls to start. I call him once a year, and I thank him. Yeah. Like the last time I called him, I was in tears yeah. because the program had turned, mm -hmm. and I was just like, I'm driving. I was like, I gotta call my man. But I was. I was in tears, man, because I'm like, we didn't have balls. Mm. Mm. And that's so, not, not mm. the truth. Like, I remember Damn. the phone call this year. My wife was riding with me, and because you called me in the car, the Bluetooth picked up. And that's the first time she had ever heard the story. Yeah. Wow. But he's just like, yo, do you remember me calling you? And, and I was like, I remember. I didn't believe him. <laughs> I didn't believe him. I was like, man, he just wants the Nike balls, man. It's the, <laughs> right. Under Armour no, school at the time. Yeah, but, <laughs> and you could give, you had enough balls to give 20 away? Man, he had all those. Damn, he <laughs> <laughs> was killing it out here. Running it up. He <laughs> was killing it out here. But no, nah, it was it was literally. So once a year, I would make sure just to reach out to him and tell him thank you. But I knew that the program had flipped, and we were at that point now where the trajectory was moving. We had the jump man deal. Different things were happening with the program, but I didn't want him to ever forget that I I didn't you know that I didn't forget where we started with that. So that That's was. Tough. 
Yeah. So that's tough. when are you gonna get the ring size for the Miyagi? You know, <laughs> 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 you know get that ring for? Hey, so. Wayne used to have this leather jacket back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> The acid wash blue joint? Wow. Absolutely, with the fur wow. in the collar. Yeah, Wait, matter of fact. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you know what's come on, that joint was fly. No, that joint was fly. At the time, what? Yeah, it was, oh, a, it was like a, it was a leather, but it looked like acid wash uh, jean color. And I remember this, I don't know if you remember this, ESPN came to do a story on him. And I was at the house, obviously, because they came to film before our game, and they wanted to like see me and him like walking up the street or whatever. And I remember turning it on, Whenever it came on, and I, I was like, screw him. I'm looking at my coat like, yo, that coat look cool. Yeah, that joint look tough. Yeah, damn, that joint's tough. Young yeah, boy had a nice joint. Yeah, had the fur around it, sure did. Absolutely. Damn, look you remember you. that. Look at you. Look at you. American <laughs> University finest right now. Uh, look at you. I want to see the 1990 team. Mm. That was a heck of a team. We lost the city title game. What was ooh, that season ooh, like? Ooh, ooh. Well, we didn't have our point guard that game. I was sick. He was mm-hmm. sick. I I, 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 I was. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> it still bothers you. I got. I think I, they said I got dehydrated. I passed out in the in the library. Mm-hmm. Like we played the championship game for the for the uh, for the conference on whatever day. No, no, no. Remember, we had we had to win three games. We had to win three games. So remember, we played Gonzaga back crazy then, amount of we times. Had the yeah. First half, we played like five champion, times. Champion, the second half, champion. Yeah because we didn't win the first half championship and we tied for the second half championship. So we had to break that tie. Oh, that's why we played. And then we had to play the first half champion to see who goes to the city title game. So we actually played three like win or go home games in a row. And they were all, not back to back, but they were high intense. Yeah. And then maybe Friday, Sunday, Tuesday or something like that. Yeah, and I was in in class, I was in the library or something and like I passed out, I was at, uh, ambulance came pick me up or whatever, yeah. and I tried to play the game with Sunday, mm-hmm. and I was I couldn't I couldn't go I couldn't go. I probably played some of the first quarter. Yeah. And we still only lost by one. Yeah, yeah. Lost got that one other game. question, Doctor Cars Jim. Ha ha! I talked yeah, to him this morning. Called Doc me. called me. Ain't Doc called me. Yesterday. Doc called me. I got called about <laughs> get back in the car. Yeah. <laughs> Let me call him first, man. <laughs> when, he, when did he call he you? Cu- he cuss you out. When did he call you first? Yesterday. He, so he called me this morning. All right, you go ahead. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, I, I had my go. session this morning. <laughs> Man, but Doc, Doc, he's the one that took me the first time to Doc's gym out at uh, Fort Meade. And I remember going there, and uh, I, <laughs> I remember playing. I get in there, and, like, you threw me the ball. You threw the ball at me, and it was so hard. And I was like, yo, why are you throwing the ball so hard? But everybody was just like, the game's with the six yeah. or five. It was like, it wasn't no you know, play 15 points, kind of warm yourself up and then play. It was like, yo, five or six points, every every point matters. And I remember one of the first times I came down like in transition, shot a three or something. And I think, I remember the dudes kind of stopping, like, ho, 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 young fella. That ain't what we do. Every possession matters. We're going to move it, we're going to screen, and that's how I learned how to play. Yeah. That's how I learned how to play. Yep. 2020, the last, my last full season here before the, my last year, the COVID year, he came and did his mm-hmm. level five training mm-hmm. with my team. And I mean, you talk about bringing a team together in the preseason and how intense that, I mean, you're talking about eight hours one day, six hours the next day. And that was the abbreviated version because we were just a high school. And, like yeah. we can't just like, it's not college. You can't just keep us in the dorm room. Yeah. Like it was unbelievable. Um, that dude, Doc Carr is, by far one of the most influential people that a lot of people don't know about. Absolutely. Now, Doc's Gym, how many pros in this area went through playing there every Sunday morning? Um, Doc yeah. Carr is, is a legend. And you know who had an open invite that nobody else did? Big John Thompson. <laughs> <laughs> so every, it's, it's past the statutes of limitations now, but like, it didn't matter if it was during the live recruiting period yeah. or dead period, Big John be up top. <laughs> Yep. Just watching. Hey, I like him. <laughs> Jerome Williams. Yep. Jerome Williams that's ended up going to Georgetown because of he found. saw him at Doc at Doc's gym. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah.